Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praises be to Allah, the Lord of the Lords. As we all know, undeniably, our society is afflicted with a crisis of truth. A crisis that has culminated in the storming of our capital and possibly could have led to the deaths of the Vice President and numerous members of Congress. Why do we say this is the culmination of a crisis of truth? Because those people who stormed the Capitol were largely motivated by a lie that there was massive fraud in the last election that led to the true victor being denied victory. The courts rejected that claim as false. The electoral officials, including the elector, the Republican electoral officials in Georgia rejected that claim as being false. Everyone who examined it on its face accepted it as false, but people were convinced. This crisis of truth, we're convinced as to its truth. And we saw one of the consequences of that. And we'll see others in coming days and weeks and months. May Allah Ta'ala protect us all. Why do we say, or, or one of the reasons for this crisis is a divorcing truth from reality. This is an issue as Muslims we don't deal with because our scholars have clearly defined what knowledge is. Knowledge being the foundation for truth. Al-ilmu, al-i'taqadu al-jazimu al-mutabaqu lil that knowledge is an absolute conviction that's uh, in agreement with reality. So we don't divorce truth from reality. But in our country, there are movements both on the left and the right whose existence is predicated on divorcing truth from reality. On the left, we have the increasing influence of postmodernist thought. And from postmodernist thought, queer theory, feminist theory, critical race theory, decolonization theory. At its root, all of those things, but postmodernism in general, at its root is a divorcing of truth from reality. The postmodernists say that truth is the product of a cultural regime. There is an objective truth, but we can't, we, we with great, only can know with great difficulty. But what we accept as truth is the product of cultural, is a cultural construct. For example, they would say, you Muslims, your truth with a small t. There's no big T truth, except their contentions. Your small T truth is a product of your culture. Your culture contains the Quran. Your culture contains a belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your culture contains what we described, defined earlier, or a correspondence theory of truth. That truth corresponds with reality. But that's your culture. And since I don't accept the Quran, I don't believe in Allah, I don't uh, accept the correspondence theory of truth, then I don't accept as true what you deem to be true, even though it's rooted in reality. And then this articulates itself out into, their society, into our society. So they have their truth. You Muslims have your truth. 
We have our truth. This group has their truth. This culture produces its truth. And they're all small team. But we reject that and we say that there's ultimate truth. On the right, the idea of alternative facts have been, has been popularized especially by the last presidential administration. So this idea of alternative facts. Uh, there might be a set of facts, but there's an alternative set of facts. And this is an impossibility. It's an impossibility because the opposites don't meet. It's either night and there's an absence of light, particularly if there's no moon on that, on that night, or it's daytime. We can't say, you think it's night, but my alternative fact is claims or posits that it's day. The invalidity of that proposition is, is revealed by the impossibility of two opposites meeting. It can't be light and dark, and dark simultaneously. My hand cannot be still and moving simultaneously. That involves the meeting of impo the impossibility of two opposites meeting. Either it's still or it's moving. I can't say, well, my alternative factual universe says it's moving and it's still. No, we reject that. So this crisis is being fed and promulgated both from the left and from the right. As Muslims, it is our responsibility to advance the truth. Increasingly, you find Muslims jumping on one bandwagon or the other. Either they jump on the left bandwagon and implicitly, not explicitly, but implicitly accept a different uh, framework for understanding knowledge and reality other than what we as Muslims have traditionally and historically held on to. And so you'll find Muslims enforcing and endorsing not only alternative foundations for truth, but alternative morality that emanates from that truth. And I'll come back to this at the end. The unity of truth and morality. So to illustrate that, you'll find many Muslims now who would be very hesitant to call a prostitute a prostitute. Says that's pejorative. They're sex workers. Because prostitute contains a moral value. So the reality of the situation is that this person has illicit sexual relations for pay. But we divorce any moral judgment from that. And we say, no, we can't judge her and it might be him because they're sex workers. This is how they make their living. So let's just leave the act as it is and divorce any moral judgment from it. As I said, we'll return to this issue in conclusion. It is no accident that as our society moves away from a firm belief in God, a belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you see these ways of looking at truth and reality emerging. It's not an accident. It's no accident. For as we begin to divorce ourselves away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, away from Almighty God, who is the ultimate truth. We know as Muslim, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God is Al-Haq, the truth, the source of truth, the ultimate reality. This is a name, this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we move away from belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
then we lose our foundation to root us in truth and to, uh, to accept that there's an ultimate arbiter to determine what is true. So we believe as one of our sources of knowledge, revelation, as conveyed in the Quran and the words of our Hafiz Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that express truths conveyed to us from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as the Quran involves the eternal speech of Allah. So those meanings embody the eternal speech of Allah. So they're an articulation of divine truth in the world. We move away from God, and this happens in other religions. They move away from their scripture. They move away and develop confusion concerning truth. When this happens, we see the sort of perversity. We see the sort of immorality. We see the sort of a rejection of divinely informed etiquette in terms of how we differ, how we differ, how we interact rather with each other. Again, this happens on the right, traditionally known as the defenders of religion. What we've seen, and this was uh, illustrated by our past president, right-wing beliefs and attitudes divorced from the religious, religious component. So the vulgarity, the incivility, the boorishness, not exemplified in one man, exemplified by millions who follow and endorse one man, become illustrative of even the right moving away from religion. Why is this significant? Consider the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يهدي إلى البر وإن البر لا يهدي إلى الجنة وإن الرجل لا يصدق حتى يكتب 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 عند الله صديقا. That truth leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise and a person will continue to speak truthfully until they're recorded with the law as being truthful. وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ لَا يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَا يَكْذِبَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبُ عِنْدَ حَتَّى لَا يَكْذِبُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا And dishonesty and lies leads to illicit behavior. And illicit behavior leads to hell. And a person will continue to lie until they're recorded with the law as being a liar. Dishonest truth leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise. But if you don't believe in paradise and you don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there's no check on your, there's no ultimate mooring to root you in truth and to push you away from lying. What's hell? What's not? And so the secularization of our society is one of the root causes of the proliferation for dishonesty and lying. It is our responsibility, amongst our responsibilities to be a community totally unequivocally committed to truth and to truth telling and to emphasizing the foundation of truth belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of our responsibilities as Muslims, not to jump on this bandwagon or that bandwagon, but to create our own bandwagon and ask the people who are com remain committed to truth to jump onto that bandwagon. If we succeed by the tawfiq and the decree, the, the facilitation and the decree of Allah, we say alhamdulillah. And if we fail onto the lack of tawfiq, the lack of divine facilitation, 
and the decree not being favorable to that, to that we still say Alhamdulillah. Because winning and losing, success and failure are not with us. We are enjoined to do our best. That's all. We are enjoined to do our best. You have nothing to do with the outcome of the affair. In conclusion, we said we return to this point, the connection between truth and morality. And the, the, the fact that there's so much confusion. We ask, how do I even know the truth? I go online. There's so much confusion, so many contradicting ideas, so many mutually exclusive opinions being put forth. How do I even know the truth? We know the truth through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know the truth by committing ourselves to Allah. We know the truth by remembering through remembering Allah Ta'ala abundantly. We know the truth by making sure our hearts are connected to the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We know the truth by putting ourselves and placing ourselves in the company of truthful people, both in the realm of reality and in the virtual realm. We can't listen to television programs and online whatever where there's a lie after lie after lie after lie after lie being told at every conceivable level and expect to be truthful. A person is on the religion of their companions. Let every one of you consider well the company they keep. So to conclude, consider the prayer that our prophet taught us. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzukna tibaha. Oh Allah, Almighty God, show us the truth as the truth. So the truth comes through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it's important for us to make sure we're living a life that cultivates a conscious awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan. And then where does the moral ethical component come in? Warzukna tiba'a. And bless us to follow it. You think the last president doesn't know that he lost? You really believe that? You believe many of those hypocrites who stood up in Congress repeating that lie until they got religion when their lives were almost taken. Then they got religion and started speaking truthfully. Enough is enough, I'm out. They knew the whole time, but they did not have the moral integrity to follow the truth. And so we pray, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzukna tiba'a. Show us the truth as the truth and then give us the moral integrity to follow it. And show us falsehood as falsehood and bless us to avoid it. Give us the moral integrity and the spiritual strength to avoid it. Where does it come from? Allah. Allahumma arina. Allahumma arina. Allahumma, you show us. We can't do it ourselves. It's too confusing. It's too much, too many layers of darkness. But you are an nur, just as you are al haq You are the light and you are the truth. So show it to us and shine that light down upon us so that we can be guides for a confused and increasingly lost humanity. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah give us taysir. May Allah grant us divine facilitation towards success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for us. Because they're not always easy. May Allah ta'ala bless us to be committed to the truth. Aqullu qawli hadi. Astaghfirullah bi wa lakum.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا حبيبنا وقرة عيوننا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم What happens brothers and sisters when truth comes? جاء الحق وزاحق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا Truth comes Falsehood perishes Falsehood by its very nature is doomed is destined to perish. So may Allah Ta'ala bless us to convey the truth through our words, our speech, our actions, our moral fiber.